What's going on YouTube? Warstorm here coming at you guys with another video. As promised, today I'm bringing you the updated DVD deck profile. Now I will say that the deck is still not quite where I would want it to be. While it is a lot more playable now that the uh, Master Rule changes are in effect, I will say that it's still got a lot of the same issues that it had before. The Master Rule changes just made it slightly more playable. It didn't make the deck better. The deck still has a lot of those issues where it's like it needs three to four cards to do what most meta decks can do with one to two cards but then, nevertheless it's still a pretty fun deck to play it's still one of my favorite decks of all time so it's high time i go ahead and get it updated for you guys I'm out of the way we'll go ahead and get the deck profile so for the pendulum ddd monsters we, we got three keplers three ragnarok two copernicus one thomas and the new edition of our chaos king apocalypse so um these should be pretty familiar to any DDD player. Um, this one searches your dark contracts. This one, a lot, Ragnarok is arguably the best monster in the deck. Extender, it's a great extender, and on top of that, it can banish things going second, which is fantastic. Copernicus is a card, it's basically your Armageddon Knight. I'm always a little iffy on the card because it can be a little bit bricky, so that's why it's in here at two. Thomas, the deck isn't quite as focused on rank eight plays. Um, in the current build, I only have a couple, two rank eights in the form of Harbinger and Kaliuga in the extra deck, so due to space issues, so only one Thomas. Um, and Apocalypse is a new addition actually because um, if you're unfamiliar what it does, it's ma you're mainly using it for its pendulum effect. If it's if it's in the pendulum zone, you can banish two DD monsters from your graveyard to special summon it. So um, you're going to be typically setting it from the uh, deck to the pendulum zone with your Gilgamesh here. So the cool thing about that is you can, if you have a Lamia sitting on the board, you can make Gilgamesh set this from your pendulum zone, banish two DD cards, and then special summon it. And then you can use it in Lamia to make Siegfried while you're under Gilgamesh's restriction. So you can do all your your non DD extra deck monsters, and then put and then put this out so you can make Siegfried. It's actually a pretty solid play, and I really do like having it in here. It's a pretty, and it's a, and it's a pretty solid ratio wise. If you don't like Apocalypse, I guess you could play a second Thomas if you so wish, but I personally like it a lot. Then for the slimes, we're playing three copies of Swirl Slime along with the two Necro Slimes. Necro Slime went down to two in this particular list because I found that it's not the best card. You don't always want it in your hand. You want to put it in the graveyard with things like Swirl Slime, or you want to use things like Foolish Burial, things like Copernicus to put it in the graveyard. It's a good to have that Miracle Fusion effect to give you a great extender to keep your plays going, but personally I've found that it's best at two. Swirl Slime, on the other hand, is a great is one of the best starter cards in the deck. It can activate in hand, fusion summon, and then you can banish in the grave to special summon a DD monster from your, your hand. It's a great extender, great play starter, really good card. Then for our tuners, we have the three copies of our girl DD Lamia here, along with the one copy of Ghost. This is a new addition to the deck. Thanks to Halka Fibrax, it actually makes Ghost completely good and viable to play. I personally found the card to be fantastic for just getting you getting you closer to some of your synchro plays. It's got a great level, and when it hits the grave, it can dump extra copies of DD monsters that are in your grave, so you don't draw them. And on top of that, it, when it's banished by things like Apocalypse or, or Necro Slime, it can then return a banished DD uh, monster from your graveyard back from your banished pile back to your grave. Lamia is obviously the the main play here, though. You're gonna want to grab. There's a lot of times you're going to grab this with Halka Pyrax, and it's you really want to have this in the rotation because you're, a lot of your plays are going to summon this over and over to, to get to your big plays. Then for the last monster, we're playing one copy of Destruction Sword. Until until they ban this card, I'm going to have this in here alongside Union Carrier because if your plays do get stopped, you can make Union Carrier and then summon Siegfried. And since Siegfried is a dark is a dark monster, you can attach Destruction Sword. So not only will you have a 3800 body that locks your opponent out of the extra deck, if they do happen to have any kind of removal, Siegfried can negate it. It's it's a really good play to have if your plays do get stopped. That's why it's in here. Until until Konami bans it. <laughs> So for the Dark Contracts, we have three copies of Gate, along with the one copy of Swamp King. It's a pretty standard ratio, I think. Um, Swamp King is not similar. You want to typically search this out to be an extender. It's basically a similar effect to Necro Slime. It's, it allows you to fusion summon by using DD monsters that are uh, in your... Using monsters in your, your hand or your side of the field. The graveyard, you can also banish from the grave as well. 
Engage is basically your main search card. You activate it, search any DD monster from your deck. They do burn you on your standby phase, but that's not really an issue with things like Lamia. You don't really care about taking damage in this deck. Then for the draw cards, we have the one copy of Upstart Goblin, we have the three copies of Alert Darkness, and the three copies of Pot of Desires. Um, it's unfortunate that Ends the Void did get limited on the last list because now that it's limited, you really can't afford to play it because it's only really good if you open it and you only got about a 12% chance to open it. So that's why it's not in here. Um, but this draw engine is the, basically the mat. You want to, the deck really gets going when it gets all its draw engine and draw cards going. When that gets going and it can, it can thin out your deck and get through your engine pieces, that's when the deck really, really shines. And I personally find that this is, if you want to have all of these draw cards the maximum amount Konami allows you to play them. Next up, we have three copies of War Arf. Though this is one of the, this is a card I always go back and forth on, but nowadays I personally find it is a pretty dang good extender. I mean, as long as you have an access to a level one monster, you can grab Kepler or Lamia. It's a great extender for the deck. I will say that I have tested some builds online with Magician Souls, and it makes this it works amazingly with Magician Souls. However, you know I obviously can't afford to get my hands on that card, so it, if if you are you have copies of Magician Souls, it does work wonders with this card. Then for the then for the uh, then we have three copies of Called by the Grave. Um, it's always this card is always dependent on what else is running around, but. I personally find it does hit a lot of hand. It doesn't hit Gamma, which is a popular hand trap right now. It doesn't hit Nibiru. So this is something you can basically side in and out depending on the format. But personally, I still have it in here just because, you know, being able to stop those Ash Blossoms, those Ghost Ogres, things like that from interrupting your plays is pretty dang nice. Then for the last three cards, cards we have three one of the one Foolish Burial, one Monster Reborn, and the one one for one. Um, I... This is definitely something you could trim. I personally just like having it in here because it's a good extender, but it's definitely something you can negotiate out if you so wish. Foolish Burials kind of speaks for itself. It's basically your grave in this deck is the second deck, so you Foolish Burials great. One for one can grab your Kepler or Lamia straight from the deck. It's a pretty dang good card. Now we're moving on to the extra deck. Of course, the first monster is our copy of Christron Halka Fibrax, or Needle Fiber, Noodle, whatever you want to call it. Um, this card really helps this deck in so many different ways. Not only can it grab Lamia and go straight from the deck, you can tag it out on the opponent's turn to summon another Synchro, which works really great with the next card, which is Gilgamesh, because Gilgamesh puts you under a DD restriction. You can use it to get resort. You can use then use Halka Fibrax to tag into another negate on your opponent's turn. Usually that'll be Savage Dragon, or but these are so many plays you can make with this, and it's just really really good to have in here. I really like having them in here. Have, um, and Gilgamesh is is honestly a card I know a lot of pl DD players um, were iffy on, but once I tested it out, I found it was fantastic for getting getting you that extra little step, getting you another extender to get into your extra little plays. I personally found it to be really really good. Next up, we have one copy of Cross Sheet. This is mostly here for a Savage Dragon play. It's a great extender for any deck that's running fusions. It works fantastic in the deck and I'm in testing, but if you're not playing Savage Dragon, you can definitely negotiate this out. It's just in here for that reason, it's just, and it gives you a target to attach for your Savage Dragon. Then we have the one copy of Union Carrier. Um, you know, this mostly is here to work with the Destruction Sword, but in a pinch, you can actually use this to make. Um, you can use this to put a DD monster, attach it, and then link it off to put it in the graveyard, I guess, and pinch. So, I, it definitely won't be in here when they, when they do ban Destruction Sword, but it's just in here for that purpose. Then for the Synchros, we have one copy of Formula Synchron. This is here for the tagging into Needle Fiber in the opponent's turn. You can hard make this pretty easily, but I don't find a lot of situations where you really need to, so, yeah. Then, uh, then we have one copy of Gus King Alexander. This is actually the only level 7. I could not, for the life of me, find room for Meteor Burst Dragon. You could play, like, 20 cards in this extra deck. It's so dang tight. But anyways, like, this is this is a necessary combo piece to, that allows you to keep extending and and go into your, uh, bring out in your uh, Lamia back so you can make Crystal Wing. It's pretty dang solid. Then for the level 8s, so we have the one Siegfried, the one Crystal Wing, and the one Savage Dragon. Siegfried is obviously a, a great card for the deck, being a walking negate for any face-up spell or trap. Crystal Wing is, you know, Crystal Wing, it's a DD deck, you gotta have it in there. 
Savage Dragon, oftentimes you're going to be making it with by tagging into Formula Synchron with Needle Fiber, using then using Needle Fiber, then using Formula and something like a little Genghis to make uh, Savage Dragon, and it can it's great for having that extra negate. Person, I really these synchros are one of the things that make the deck you know as good as it is. Then for the fusions, I actually only have three. I have two Genghis and the one big Genghis. Personally, I found that Oracle, I cannot, for the life of me, find space for it. It's not a bad card, but the extra deck space is way too tight. You need extenders in your extra deck. The second Genghis comes up a lot because you're going to use it with Formula Synchron to make um, to make a Savage Dragon. And High King Genghis is great for making that uh, your rank 8 plays, such as Harbinger and stuff. And it's a great extender for the deck as well. Um, but I also have two Genghis for the next card I'm going to talk about, which is... Hiking Caesar. So this is a card um, I really, really like in the deck. Not only can it is it a walking, you know, solemn judgment basically for monsters. It can stop. It's basically can stop any effect that summons a monster. It's not once per turn. You can pump up your monsters as well. And on top of that, it is a great out for Nibiru. As long as you're able to, you can make this pretty efficiently under five summons if you have the right hand. And it gives you, you know, it does give you a win to place to out. Um, to out uh, new Bureau. If you want to play something else than this, you can definitely play the Galaxy Eyes Rank 8. I think it's called Photon Lord. And you can play that instead of this, and it kind of accomplishes the same thing. Then for the Rank 8s, of course, we have Havenger and Kali Yuga. Um, Kali Yuga is, uh, is one of the, th the few ways the deck can play going second. As long as it's around, I'm going to have it in here. It's a fantastic card. So it can be a blowout card against back row decks. If it resolves going second against a back row deck, you typically auto win at that point. Um, Harbinger is still a great negation, um, especially with a lot of this, but it's dependent on how many spells are flinging around in the format. Um, if you do want to play another rank eight, your options are things like Dengirsu, things like uh, Photon Lord are definitely options, but I just found the extra deck is just way too tight to accommodate those cards. So anyway, guys, let me know what you guys thought of this deck profile down in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. It's Warstorm, signing out.